and welcome to mini episode 276 of Real Life Ghost Stories. And I have one spooky story today and our story comes from March the 1st, 2023 and it comes from Joanne. When I was 19, I was attending university and working at a local pub to help pay the bills. Now, I'd always been uneasy about the home I was living in as I had sensed that we were not alone in the home. I always felt uneasy and watched. One night when I returned home from work at around 2am, I was standing at the kitchen sink having a glass of water. I was facing the kitchen window, with my back towards the living room, and the living room light suddenly turned on. I almost peed my pants, my heart started racing, and I thought I was going to throw up as I knew that my parents were in bed sleeping and no one was in the living room. Then, the light turned off. I became aware that I was holding my breath and let out a big sigh, but then the light turned back on. I was so terrified. My cat began growling and got all big and puffy as if he was about to fight something. I was so scared that I shut my eyes and walked out of the kitchen and down the hall to my room. I jumped into bed and pulled the sheets over my head because we all know that we are all safe in bed under the sheets. It never happened again but my cat from time to time could be found growling at the corner of the living room. 17 years ago my stepfather passed away. He was terminally ill and had wished for an at-home death, so my mom did the best she could to make him comfortable and had in-home palliative care arranged. At the time, I was going through a separation from my husband and had returned to live with my parents until I could get back on my feet. My daughter lived with me and was two and a half years old at the time. In the months leading up to my stepfather's death, strange things began to happen in the home. I witnessed shadow figures walking through the kitchen that no one else saw and bizarre lights in the home. My stepfather had said he had seen these things as well and talked to me about the little boy who would come and visit him. We would talk openly about our paranormal experiences in the home until he was too ill to speak. Although they were odd, we never felt threatened by any of it. My mother never witnessed any of it. One afternoon while my daughter was playing in the basement, She came upstairs and said, Mommy, there's a man in the basement. I ran downstairs thinking that someone had broken into the home, only to find out that there was no one in the basement. I went back upstairs and asked her what she saw. She said, and I quote, There was a tall, distinguished man in the basement. I laughed as I thought distinguished was a very big word for a two and a half year old, so I asked her what made him distinguished. She responded very calmly. Well, he was very tall, and he was wearing a dark blue suit, a white shirt, and a dark blue tie. His shoes were shiny, his hair was really neat, and he had no fur on his face. No fur meaning clean-shaven. I agreed that her description of the man indeed fit the idea of a distinguished man. I asked her what colour his hair was, and she said it was dark brown. Knowing that there was no one in the basement, I realised that my daughter had seen a full-bodied apparition. As the weeks went on, I would still sit with my father each day, I knew he was dying, but I still loved to sit with him and read or watch TV. One evening I heard the time 10.40 in my head. I had no idea what it meant and asked what it meant but had no answer. In a few days I had come to understand that 10.40 would be the time of my stepfather's death and that I would be in the room with him when he passed. I had no idea how I knew that, I just knew. I didn't know the day or if it would be AM or PM but I knew the time. It was the most surreal thing. One night I was out and I suddenly had the urge to go back home. I started to panic and knew that I had to get home immediately. I was totally panicked as I drove my car home. I understood in that moment that my stepfather was going to pass that night. Again, I have no idea how I knew, I just knew. I got home and immediately the panic stopped. I had tea with my mom and my stepfather's palliative care worker. After tea, I walked into the room and sat and held his hand. In a few moments, I noticed the paradoxical breathing and knew that he was indeed dying. I told him it was okay to let go and that we would be okay. I looked at the clock on the wall. It was 10.40pm. I called my mom back into the room and we held on to his hands and talked to him until he stopped breathing. His passing was very peaceful. We called for the nurse to pronounce his death and for the pastor to come and say the last rites and for the funeral home to come and remove his body. 
Family members came to the home and we all said some prayers in the room with my stepfather before his body was taken to the funeral home. In all, there were nine people in the room during prayers. After the funeral home came to remove the body, we all went back to the room he was in. We walked single file back into the room. As I walked back into the room with everyone, I looked down the hallway towards the room my daughter was in, and there was a tall man standing there. He was as tall as the door he was standing beside. He was wearing a dark blue suit, a white shirt and a dark blue tie. His suit was neatly pressed and his shoes were shiny. His hair was gelled back like brill cream and his face was clean shaven. He looked to be about 40 years old and he was Caucasian. I could not see through him, he was solid. When it registered with me what I had just seen, I stepped back and had another look down the hallway. There was nothing there. No one else had seen him. After everyone had left, I did not want to go asleep in my own bed, so I crawled into my daughter's bed for a snuggle. I woke a few hours later and opened my eyes. The tall man was standing near the dresser. He said to me, It's okay, go back to sleep. And I closed my eyes and went back to sleep. Our conversation seemed to take place in my mind as I did not physically speak to him. I wasn't scared of him, as his presence was peaceful. I have never seen the tall man again, and I have no idea who he was, but I've often thought that perhaps he is one of my guardians. I'm in tears as I write this, as the experience was so profound it is difficult to explain. After getting settled into my new home with my daughter, I had a few experiences. The home was previously owned by a couple, Iris and Stan. They had lived in the home since it was built and raised their kids there. I knew the house was an estate sale and that one of the previous owners, the husband Stan, had passed away on the property. I was unaware whether he had passed in the home or on the land. I only knew that Stan had passed on the property. His wife Iris had remained in the home until she could no longer take care of herself in the home. My first night alone there I was lying in bed and suddenly heard my kitchen cupboards opening and closing loudly. It was as if someone was rapidly opening them and slamming them shut. I was terrified. I then heard loud footsteps leading out of the kitchen and heading down the hall towards the primary bedroom where I was in bed. My heart started racing like mad and I felt like I was going to be sick so I quickly pulled the sheets up over my head, like that was going to help. I was terrified. The footsteps came into the bedroom and stopped at the foot of my bed. Somehow I managed to say, Stan, this is my house now. Iris no longer lives here. This is not your home. You are not welcome upstairs. Please do not scare me like this. I am okay if you want to live here too, but can you just stay in the basement? I would be okay with that, as it was your house first. I never doubted it was anyone else other than Stan. I knew he was attached to the property. I never heard Stan upstairs again, but my daughter and her friends would often run upstairs and tell me about strange sounds coming from the back storage area of the house. I would tell them that it was just Stan and he wouldn't harm them. My daughter's friends thought I was nuts. I would often go into the storage room where Stan's workbench was. It was a really nice built-in workbench that I had left in place and used. I would talk to him. It seems odd, but I would have casual chats with him while in the back room. I never got a response, but I always felt really calm there. I was never creeped out, never on edge. Stan gave off a grandfather vibe. From that evening on, I would hear a loud bang on the HVAC, like someone hitting the venting, and I would say, good night Stan, and it would stop. After a few months, I had a roommate. One day she was asking me what I do in the basement each night, as there is a lot of banging in the back room. I told her that was the ghost that lived in the basement. Her jaw hit the floor and she said, what? I told her that Stan had passed away on the property and that he lived in our basement. She immediately went and got her rosary and started praying. And after a few weeks, she moved out. As time went on, my boyfriend moved in and he did not have any experiences. When we were building a new fence, we had to tear down the original one. As we were tearing it down, I went to walk into the far corner of the yard when I suddenly stopped. My boyfriend asked me what was wrong and I said, I cannot go into that corner. There is death in that corner and it makes me feel weird. 
My boyfriend looked at me like I had three heads and went to the corner of the yard and removed that portion of the fence. As we were taking down the old fence, the neighbours came over and started talking to us. During the conversation, they told us that Stan, the original owner of the property, had passed away of a heart attack in that corner of the yard. They were the ones that found him and called 911. My boyfriend just looked at me. We have since moved into a new home and I still experience things, but they are more residual energy experiences. Like I said, I have always had experiences. I cannot explain any of it. I have just accepted it. To go back to your first story, Joanne, um, there's something so unsettling about coming home from work kind of late in the evening, late at night, or even like coming in from a night out, whatever it is. And the house is so quiet, everything's quiet, it's so dark and you're sort of turning on lights as you go around the house. It's such an unnerving feeling anyway. And then to be standing there with your back to a room, drinking a glass of water and suddenly the light turns on and off and on again. Oh, I would be, you best believe I'd be shitting myself. And if the cat then, you know, got all puffy and started hissing or whatever, I'd be like, you can fucking knock that off. Okay. You can stop that unless you are literally going to fight that demon down into the depths of hell. Like Gandalf falling down into the big fire demon. I'm I'm not interested. I don't have a garden in the house that I currently live in, but I do have a tiny courtyard that has a sensor light. And uh, every so often I'll be sitting in my sitting room late in the evening and the sensor light will go on. And it always gives me a fright. Every single time it gives me a fright. And every single time it's a little black kitten from one of the houses who has taken it upon himself or herself to um, invade my courtyard in the middle of the night and freak me out. And in regards to your second story, at the risk of repeating myself, I feel like death and the process of death brings weird energy, for real. Now, whether that is, whether it like attracts things, I don't know whether it just throws off an energy that in our mind creates things I don't know but death death I think brings about weird things and all the emotions that come with death when you're waiting for somebody to die and anticipatory grief is such a strong emotion as well and I think all those strong emotions make like a perfect storm I know that your stepfather said he was seeing these things too and he talked about a little boy that would visit him and a lot of people argue that you know the brain starts to hallucinate as certain things are shut down when somebody gets close to death and I absolutely agree that that stuff happens but there's also been so many stories of people who hallucinate in inverted commas really specific things or specific people who have died previously in that space I just I just think the time leading up to death is a weird time in terms of energy And I have heard numerous stories about the loved ones that have passed of the dying person coming to collect them when they're when it is their time. And I wonder if the man, the distinguished man, which love the fact that your little two and a half year old said the word distinguished, if the distinguished man in the basement was the man who was coming to collect your stepfather or, as you said as well, it could simply be that 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 man in the basement was your guardian who was there in your time of need so you're not only grieving but also going through a separation process which as most people know is a very difficult time emotionally too and as for you knowing the time of death like I don't know I think that's so strange but again I do think that people in life develop connections that are almost spiritual that are much stronger than anything biological and that those connections can create weird scenarios and weird circumstances like knowing the time that your stepfather was going to die and I want to say as well Joanne that I am with you on the if you have the blankets over you you are safe no matter what happens you're safe from murderers robbers demons anything paranormal you put that blanket over you and it's an immediate force field and I also wonder in the case of hauntings like like Stan who owned the house previously and passed away on the property like does Stan realize that he's dead and if he doesn't realize that he's dead is he like what the fuck are all these people doing in my house and if he does realize that he's dead is he like I don't want these people in the house or I want these people to acknowledge me because this was my house first I'm also really impressed at your 
death sensing abilities. It's pretty amazing. And it must have been really validating to have the neighbours go, oh, that's that's the corner of the garden of the yard where Stan passed away. I would definitely be looking at my boyfriend going, see, see, my death radar is on point. So you better watch yourself. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Thank you to Joanne for sending in your story. Remember, Joanne's story came from March the 1st, 2023. And if you would like to send in your story, you can do so by emailing it to reallifeghoststoriespodcast at gmail.com. You can also check out the website reallifeghoststoriespodcast.com. And if you are desperate for some extra content, you can subscribe to our Patreon. That is patreon.com forward slash reallifeghoststories, where for $5 a month or $2 a month, you get access to heaps of extra content, as well as every single main and mini episode completely ad-free. And on that note, I shall see you next time.